The views and opinions expressed in Cold and Missing are exclusively those of the hosts. All parties mentioned are considered innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Cold and Missing also contains adult themes and languages. Listener discretion is advised. I'm your host, Ali McLaughlin Solkowski. And I'm your co-host, Eli Solkowski. And this is Cold and Missing, where we cover cold cases and missing person cases. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cold and Missing. I'm your host, Allie. And I'm your co-host, Eli. You were off last week for your birthday. I was, and our dog had an ear infection. It was a wild day. (laughs) He did. He did have an ear infection. He's okay now. His birthday is the day before mine. Wild. Two little Scorpios. But you have a case for us, right? Yes, I do. And this one actually came to me from a listener. So this is somebody who reached out asking me to cover um, a family friend's of theirs missing person case. So I immediately stopped everything I was researching and focused in on this. So today we are covering a missing person. And just as a bit of a content warning at the top, this case does involve domestic abuse. Today, we're going to be talking about the missing person case of Deva Leonard. And this takes place in February of 2021 in Divide, Colorado. But first, a little bit about Deva. Deva is 39 years old in 2021, and she would be 41 years old today. She's the mother of six who always checked in on her children since they did not stay with her. Her sister took care of the kids, but Deva was a loving and thoughtful mother who wanted what was best for her children, which meant that they needed to live with her sister. Her sister Micah says, quote, She's the one person always laughing, making jokes. She really was the comedian of the family, end quote. A family friend told me that Deva is feisty and funny. Deva is around 5 feet 4 inches, 130 pounds, has green eyes and auburn hair. She wears black rim glasses and has a dragon tattoo on her back, as well as a tattoo and a scar on her left arm. Deva's family and friends became worried about the relationship she was in. She had met her boyfriend, Steve, on a dating website, and the relationship moved quickly. Her sister Micah said, quote, She met him online on a dating website, and then he came down to Pueblo and picked her up. My other sister says the first time he came and picked her up, he was just like possessive and, come on, we gotta go, get your stuff. And everybody in the house was like, who is this guy? Why is he acting like this? End quote. Deva moved to Divide, Colorado with her boyfriend around 2018. Deva didn't have her own cell phone or vehicle, but kept in contact with her family and her children. Deva and her siblings had had a rough start in life, and Deva continued to struggle and was very vulnerable, having struggled with addiction in the past and her mental health. Deva had recently begun voicing concerns about her relationship to her family, leading them to believe that she was in an abusive relationship. And now a timeline of events. So sometime between February 28th and March 3rd is the last time that Deva is seen. On her NamUs profile, it does say February 28th, but other media reports that it was March 3rd was the last time she was seen. So there is some discrepancy there, but it does seem that at the end of February, beginning of March of 2021 was the last time Deva was seen. She was last seen at her boyfriend's house, which was located in the Rainbow Valley subdivision in Divide, Colorado. Looking up the house online, the subdivision and the home is surrounded by forest. It's not really a walkable community, so it would be difficult to get around without a car, which Deva did not have. She was reported to be last wearing a gray, puffy Columbia coat with pockets on the front and side, And she was either wearing jeans or shorts by some reports, but it does seem that jeans are more likely. While David did not have a cell phone or vehicle, all of her other personal items were left behind. Photo albums, her clothing, and most notably, her precious dog, Ello. On March 5th, 2021, there was a family birthday party that Deva was expected to be at and she never shows up. If Deva did not show up in the past, she always made sure to call and let people know where she was. Again, her sister Micah says, quote, She was supposed to come back for his birthday on March 5th or call or something, and she never called, never came back. I got a bad feeling on March 3rd. I just, in my heart, I knew something was wrong. End quote. The next day, March 6, 2021, once Deva failed to show for the family party, Micah contacts the police, stressing to them that Deva would not leave without telling her family, and she certainly wouldn't leave her dog. 
The sheriff's office isn't too concerned about her disappearance. They believe that Deva walked out on her own without anything but the coat she was wearing. Micah says, quote, for the sheriff's office to say that she didn't have nothing there and then she walked away with nothing and she left her dog, Ello, she didn't. She didn't walk away from her stuff, unquote. A few days pass by, and with still no word from Deva, the family requests that the sheriff's office does a welfare check on March 11th, so it's been about 11 days since anyone has heard from Deva. It appears that they did go to the home that she shared with her ex-boyfriend, but she was not there, and all of her personal items and dog were left behind. Her boyfriend Steve tells police that Deva left on foot about a month ago, and he hadn't heard from her since. The boyfriend does not seem to be too concerned with Deva's disappearance or the fact that Colorado has very harsh weather and she left on foot. And then that's really all the information that I could find for 2021. The next update comes nearly a year later in February of 2022. And this will be the first time that the sheriff's office asked the public for help in finding Deva. They never seem to have posted a missing person poster, or anything on their Facebook before this date of February of 2022. The sheriff's office says that new information has emerged and that they are beginning to look for her more seriously. They also mentioned that her bank account has not been accessed since she disappeared. I'm not sure if this is the new information that emerged or if police have additional details that they're not releasing to the public. A family friend did tell me that Deva continued to receive Social Security income all throughout 2021, but it just remained untouched in her bank account. Her family and friends are concerned because how can anyone get by in this world without accessing their money? It's around this time that police officially reopen her case. In May of 2022, Deva has been missing for over a year at this point, but the family remains hopeful for answers. As Deva's case gets more and more traction online, her ex-boyfriend sold the home that they shared together and moved out of state. It also appears that during this time, the sheriff's office invites the Colorado Bureau of Investigation to help aid them in their search for Deva. In March of 2023, so this is two years now that Deva has been missing, her family is begging the public for information and to just listen to them. They desperately are trying to get media coverage, newspapers to report on her, podcasts to report on her, because they are so desperate for people to listen to them and to help search for Deva. The family does hold a memorial and remembrance vigil at the entrance of the Rainbow Valley subdivision, hoping to bring more awareness to her case. The family, at this point, fears the worst since they have not heard anything from Deva, and they do believe that she wouldn't just disappear without reaching out to them especially her children. And then this is truly all of the information that I could find on Deva Leonard. So if you know anything about the disappearance of Deva Leonard, or her whereabouts today, or what happened to her possessions, her photo albums, her additional clothing that was left at her ex-boyfriend's house, if you have any idea what happened to any of her personal items, please call the Teller County Sheriff at 719-687-9652. Also, if you or a loved one is experiencing an abusive relationship, help is out there. The National Domestic Abuse Hotline is 1-800-799-7233. There's also an app called Bright Sky that looks like a weather app, but whenever you put in your area code, it will give you localized information for domestic abuse help. So it will pull up everything in your zip code to access. And the sources for the timeline today come from the NamUs database, KRDO, Fox 21, and family and friends of Deva Leonard. So that is the missing person case of Deva Leonard. I, I am, of course, heartbroken about the lack of information about Deva, but sometimes I think, you know, podcasts like this, like Cold and Missing, we exist to just speak about the person. We exist to speak about the person, even if it's not much. You know, hopefully even 10 people hear it and her name is back where it very much should be. This was not that long ago. This was in the pandemic. I just can't understand how so little can happen in in 2021. 
Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does make sense, but it doesn't make any sense. Like, it makes no sense that in 2021, so little was done in regards to searching for Deva. They really kind of chalked it up to, well, she's an adult. She can walk away if she wants to. But, you know, when the family is insisting, no, 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 this is not correct. This is not right. This is not like her. This is out of the normal for them to still wait almost a year before they even post something on social media to say, like, be on the lookout for this person. Have you seen this person? It's that blows my mind that that was not done sooner because it it feels like the bare minimum for all missing people. I don't think I have a ton of questions right now. I don't have enough information, honestly. I'm still swimming in the fact that this was very recent. That's where I'm at right now. I'm more interested in just like a conversational way to hear what you have to say about this. Yeah. You know, a big question I I would love to ask the Teller County Sheriff's Department is just like, why? Why was this not a priority for you? Like, that's a question that I have. That's not even necessarily related to the case, but it, you know, it has everything to do with the case. You know, to me, it kind of feels like the police wrote her off as, well, she'll show up when she shows up or she won't. And it seems like they didn't want to invest their resources into finding her, which here at Cold and Missing, like any person who's missing, any person who's been murdered, I think needs all of the resources, especially those who are vulnerable and living on the edge. I'm just really glad that someone reached out and that we're saying her name and that this case is being brought back into the light or maybe into the light for the for the first time. Um, I don't mean that the family, you know, it seemed like the family was really pushing for what they know about her and It just grinds my gears that often the family isn't listened to by law enforcement about, like, the behaviors of their loved one. And I do understand that there are mistakes and sometimes you don't know who you love, you know? Like, I I get that. But for the most part, the family is almost always right. That's what's upsetting is, like, you're – you guys have to know this. Like – yeah, getting worked up. It grinds my gears that they don't listen to the family. And like, this family knew her. Clearly. And because it's so recent, like, they knew her very recently. And I don't know. It's a shame. Yeah, the family really did try to raise the alarm within days of Deva disappearing. They knew something was off, especially when she didn't show up to the birthday party. I did read reports that this party could have possibly been one of her kids' birthday parties. So if I couldn't find that in media reports, I just kind of saw that talked about in like online forums and things. But if that's the case, and it was her son's birthday party, it would be very out of the ordinary for Deva not to show up. But for her not to show up and then not call anybody and say why she was not showing up. She very regularly checked in with her family, checked in with her children, and, you know, came down from the mountain to see them and to spend time with them. So the fact that she didn't show up to this birthday party, the family immediately tried to raise the alarm saying, this is not correct, this is not right, something is wrong here, and the police just didn't take them seriously. Well, I'm glad we're taking it seriously. I hope that more people continue to talk about her and that, you know, there's just more access to information about what happened purely for, like, helping this family. Mm -hmm. But I think that's it for me right now. Do you have anything else to add, Allie? Well, just a future hope of mine for this case is that it does really start to gain traction and get in the media more and that the family gets the support that they deserve as the family of a missing person. They deserve those resources and support from their communities, from their local media. I hope that all picks up for them and they get more coverage for Deva. And then I also hope that as more people hear about her, that we can get some answers because 
What happened to all of her personal belongings? Did somebody see a fire in that neighborhood? Did somebody find anything in the woods, like a hunter or people out hiking, that didn't make sense at the time, like a bunch of clothing or something like that? But maybe looking back on it now, you think this could be related to Deva. I hope that things like that start to come out for the family so that way they can get some closure. And frankly, I hope that this home that they that Deva shared with her ex-boyfriend is searched in some capacity. I hope police can get a warrant to just search to see if there's any anything that would lead them to believe that a crime committed inside the house. I, you know, just if nothing else, to cross that off the list and to get one step closer of what actually happened to her. I, yeah, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. But we will be posting pictures of Deva. And again, if you know anything about Deva or her whereabouts today, please call the Teller County Sheriff at 719-687-9652. And again, if you or someone you love is experiencing domestic abuse, the domestic abuse hotline is 1-800-799-7233. And we will be posting photos of Deva on our Instagram, so that way you can get an idea of what she looks like These pictures are just from a few years ago, so they would still be current to what she currently looks like. So please be on the lookout for Deva in your day-to-day. If she is out there, we want to know where she is and get these answers to this family. Another way to help get Deva's story out there is to rate and review this podcast. So if you're an Apple podcast, leaving us a written review is so helpful. But no matter what platform you're on, if you could just give us a good positive rating, it helps others find our podcast and helps others find this story to find Deva's story. So please share with your loved ones. We also have our website, www.coldandmissing.com, where we will have a transcript of the podcast today. So if you or someone you love is hard of hearing, you can follow along that way. In addition, we also create YouTube videos so you can subscribe on YouTube or pop over to our website and we post the videos on there as well. Thank you for listening to Cold and Missing. I'm your host, Allie. And I'm your co-host, Eli. Have a good week and stay safe, y'all. Stay safe, y'all.